as soon as I saw questions 8 to 10, I had a conniption. <laughs> um, I couldn't even rewrite uh, the equation uh, in the same way that Acer did, even though Acer did say it can be represented as, uh, the 3D protonations can be represented as, the idea of writing an unbalanced chemical reaction is like uh, going to the Louvre and seeing uh, uh, Mona Lisa without a smile. You think you can paint? <laughs> It, it, it would be too difficult. So look, um, it would be natural, uh, even in the exam, uh, on the exam paper, just for you to add plus H plus uh, for each of the uh, reactions so that you have a continual uh, balanced uh, reaction uh, which is occurring. And then uh, you have the different pKa values. Of course, in the back of your mind, uh, you have that uh, pH is the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. Of course, pOH is a negative log OH minus concentration. And you have pKa is negative log Ka. And of course, in the back of your mind, pKb is negative log Kb, pKw is negative log Kw, because the P represents negative log. That's it. P is the negative log, and that's why you see it's replaced in this way. And here is the chemical that is being discussed here. This is um, a very poor rendition, <laughs> as, as good as I can do it, sorry, of um, citric acid. And so um, you can pause uh, the video here and uh, just name it. What organic name would you give, the systematic name for citric acid uh, because that is within the purview of this exam certainly okay i hope you named it uh well something sort of like this uh well first of all the propane because one two three carbons uh, so you would call this a propane with the three carboxylic acid groups attached so uh, this would be a two hydroxy propane one two, three, tricarboxylic acid, because these are carboxylic acid groups. Anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, if it was a question at that level, they'll give you a little bit of suggestions uh, along the way. So uh, the important thing is that you see that there's three carboxylic acid groups, even if you don't see it this way um, in the chemical that they're providing, which you don't, you absolutely don't. You do see it uh, in the way that uh, they give the information, which is sort of X, and um, COOH and then three. So you have the three carboxylic acid um, functional groups uh, present. And then, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be one ionic form, just uh, one, um, and this is negative two, and this will be negative three, so something that we'll keep an eye on. And these are the pKa's. So it's very important that you understand what a Ka is, of course. The Ka is the acid dissociation equilibrium constant. So, for example, if I was to look at the Ka for this reaction, um, I would say that the Ka is the product of the product uh, um, divided by the reactant. So it's the product of the products with square brackets, uh, which indicate concentration moles per liter. And that would be... Uh, um, the products and that would be divided by the product of the reactants but there's only one reactant so uh, we put the concentration of H3 um, A as the reactant and so this would be the Ka so we know that if uh, because the definition of an acid is a proton donor so if you donate a lot of proton then this means this acid is strong and that means you make a lot of this, which is the numerator, and that means the K is high. So strong acid has high Ka, and because uh, the relationship between K and pKa has this negative sign, they're always the opposite. So high Ka means low pKa. Low Ka means high pKa. And so Acer loves to play with opposites. So uh, this uh, comes up often. In fact, it's not just on this question, but it's on the last unit of this uh, exam. Uh, there's some more Ka and pKa and pKb. So lots, lots more fun to be had. So um, of course, these are uh, weak acids. Uh, carboxylic acids are very important organic acids, but they're relatively weak. And the pKa, because the Ka is giving us the equilibrium constant, pKa is the pH at that equilibrium. Whoa. 
So I'm going to prove it in a little while with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. In fact, I hope that you will derive it, and then it'll be even more clear. But this pKa, that is, represents the pH when the, um, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base are equal in concentration. So we'll prove that in, in just a li uh, little moment. But it's also important for you to know the terms. This is the conjugate acid. It is the component that can donate a proton. What donates a proton? An acid. So this is the conjugate acid. H plus is not the conjugate acid. Acer is going to have that in a different question, guaranteed sooner or later you're going to see it. So it's a conjugate this is the conjugate acid, and this is its conjugate base. Why? Because the base can accept a proton to form the acid. So conjugate acid, conjugate base. Now in this reaction, now this is the conjugate acid, and this is the conjugate base. So in a different reaction, the same species may be conjugate acid or conjugate base. Uh, this is the case for ammonia, for water, for many chemicals, uh, where they can uh, be either or, depending on the reaction. Okay. So now uh, we have a little context, and we will prove some of what I've said uh, um, shortly. But let's look at the first question. So the first question is, what's the predominant species in a solution of citric acid at pH 5? So I'm, I'm not concerned with the concentration. I'm concerned with the pH, because uh, the pH is between uh, these two these two forms. So as I said, this is the pH when these two forms are in equilibrium. So this is the pH when these two forms are in equilibrium. So the pH in between would be the pH in which this is the predominant species right here. It's the one with minus two charge. So that means that two protons were uh, given off and so it has um, now a minus two charge. So now I'm going to look for answer choice uh, uh, for that has a minus two charge. Answer choice A is neutral. Answer choice B has minus one. Answer choice C is minus two because of that little two thing. So it's two of the carboxylate anions. And so answer choice C is correct. So H is C, whereas answer choice D had a minus three. So that would be represented uh, by this. In other words, had the pH been 6, then answer choice D would be uh, true. Had the pH been 4, then answer choice B uh, would be the predominant form. And had the pH been 1, then uh, or 2, or 2.5, um, then answer choice A would be the uh, dominant form. And in fact, it would be called the protonated form because, uh, uh, of course, all the anionic uh, components would have been protonated meaning a proton had been added because the, pro, uh, the pH was so low. Okay, so that's 8C, and then moving on to 9. Uh, at what pH values the concentrations of uh, minus 1, uh, which would be here, and minus 2, the same? Well, minus 1 and minus 2 will be exactly the same at, at a pH of 4.28. Because as I said already, that is, because this is the equilibrium, then this is the pH at the equilibrium, and we will prove it in just a uh, second, and that is the um, a pH at the point in which uh, the concentration of the, um, uh, sorry, the concentration of the acid form and the concentration of the base form, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base are equivalent. So, um, so looking at the pHs that we are provided, A, B, and C are all incorrect, and that's therefore the answer is D, and the actual answer is pH 4.28. That's when they would be equivalent. As temperature uh, increases, the proportion of deprotonated species increases, and therefore. So uh, here we have the protonated form, which we already said in terms of the Ka. This is the protonated form, and this is the deprotonated form. Uh, because it's lacking uh, the proton. So we're told that the proportion of the deprotonated uh, species increases. So this is going to be uh, relatively increased. So that means Ka is going to increase. Because this is in the numerator, then Ka must increase. And if Ka increases, as I said before, because these are opposites because of the negative sign, if Ka increases, pKa must decrease. So that means the answer for 10 is B. And that would 
That would always be the case. It doesn't matter if you're looking at Ka1, which is uh, the first uh, deprotonation, or Ka2, which is the second deprotonation, or Ka3, the third deprotonation. Each and every time, the numerator would get higher uh, when you do the Ka, and that means pKa gets lower. And, and by the way, just to be clear, when K goes up, pK goes down, not because of the logarithm. Logarithm only changes the direction. Uh, if you have an exponential curve uh, that's going down, the logarithm um, uh, does not change the direction that it goes down. It just changes the rate at, of its occurrence. And it's the same thing if you have an exponential curve going up. Uh, logarithm will make it... Um, uh, linear, so it changes the rate of its occurrence, but it doesn't change the fact that it's going up. It's going up. It's the negative sign. The negative sign makes it so that when K increases, PK decreases. When KB increases, PKB decreases. Uh, when hydrogen ion concentration increases, pH decreases. When OH minus ion increases, POH decreases. Always opposites, always because um, of the negative sign, because of that relationship. Okay, so all of that's really easy. <laughs> let's let's uh, uh, let's make sure that you can use your logarithm rules to prove all this uh, using the henderson hasselbach equation. So I would ask you to pause, if you would, and show what the relationship would be between pKa and pH. So use your logarithm rules, which you can uh, get here or online or whatever, um, and uh, or you can look at the acid-base chapters or go online, and but use the um, logarithm rules to be able to determine the relationship between pKa and pH, which you can get from here. So please uh, give it a try. Uh, it's the kind of normal manipulation that you have to do for the real exam, and so you can pause and try it. Okay, so the first thing you do is you take the negative log of both sides because this is Ka, this is hydrogen, so we need the negative log of both sides. So we have a negative log of Ka is equal to negative log of, um, well, I wonder, okay, yeah, I guess I'll rewrite it, uh, H2A minus uh, H plus uh, over uh, H3A. Okay, so we know that uh, this is just pKa, and that's the reason I took the negative log of both sides, because I know I can get pKa, and I also know I can get pH. Because um, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll take that negative sign, I'll keep it outside, and I'll apply it only at the end. And then I'll use the logarithm rule that allows me to have two things that are multiplied, separate, and add. So I'll have negative sign outside, and I'll have two things that I can separate, which will be H2A minus um, over H3A, and then I'll have plus um, log of hydrogen ion concentration. So that's just using my logarithm rules. Now I'll let the negative sign in, and uh, that way uh, everything's nice and safe, and I'll also uh, bring the negative sign comes in negative log hydrogen, so that's just pH. And then I'll have minus log H2A, which is the conjugate base, over H3A, which is the conjugate acid. Okay, so now everything makes sense, hopefully, to you. <laughs> uh, first, uh, you see that if H2A, the conjugate uh, base, is equal to the conjugate acid, then the number here would be 1, the log of 1 is 0, and makes all of this 0, because log 10 to the power 0 is the same thing as log 1, which is the same thing as 0. So that makes all this 0 if these two things are the same. And so uh, that just clears up um, uh, question 9 and uh, also helps with question 10, and that makes pKa pH. pKa is pH when the conjugate acid and the conjugate base are equal. That's exactly what this says. And it also says something else that's fun uh, with uh, respect to question 10, and that is that if the proportion of the deprotonated form increases, so this deprotonated form uh, increases, that means this number will be higher, 
and you're removing this number from pH, so it makes pKa lower. So increasing this is another way you can prove that the pKa um, will end up being lower, and they will all decrease, so that is indeed 10b. You know, if you need to review your logarithms, uh, you can go to these GAMSAT math sections or acid and base uh, information in these sections of the book, uh, and of course the videos. So there's some really helpful videos, uh, even free on, on the website, gamsatprep.com, for uh, uh, titrations and buffers and acids and bases. So.